themselves and for growing the cereals they eat will only get worse with future increases in meat production. For one of Britain's leading environmentalists, that spells disaster. If we see the kind of increases in meat consumption that are now projected, particularly in the developing world, what we're going to see at the same time is a huge increase in the emissions of many of the gases leading to climate change, carbon dioxide and other gases. We're going to see increased competition for the use of water, particularly in countries that are already suffering from severe water shortages. We're going to see impacts on the natural world, on biological diversity, because of course all that increased meat consumption needs more land to produce the grain and the other feedstuffs that go into those animals. And we are going to see increasingly an impact on other pollution issues, whether it's emissions of uh, different kinds, acid rain, whatever else it might be. You top that lot up, you look at all the net accumulated environmental impact, and the increase in meat consumption suddenly looms as one of the biggest environmental crises that we are now facing. Not only is intensive meat production bad for the planet, it also means more and more animals are being kept in industrial farms. This kind of factory farming is the same the world over and denies animals their most basic behavioural needs. Pregnant pigs are kept in stalls or crates, hardly able to turn round. Young pigs are crowded together in dark pens, often on solid concrete or slatted floors. Thousands of chickens are packed together so closely that it's hard to see the floor of their sheds. Many of these animals are bred to obscene sizes, so they produce more meat for the market. Broiler, or meat chickens, have been bred to grow so quickly that often their legs buckle and their hearts and lungs degenerate, and this before they even reach their slaughter weight at just six weeks old. The explosion in meat consumption has meant an equal explosion and development of factory farming throughout the world, and this means millions more animals are kept in the most appalling conditions. And meat has indeed become cheap, but at the expense of animal welfare, the animals' lives have become cheap too and devalued. We seem to have forgotten that they are sentient beings and each one of those animals can suffer. If we all ate less meat, there would be less pressure on farmers to intensify. They could develop more sustainable, eco-friendly or organic farms where the animals are allowed to forage and less cereal feeds are required. It's this kind of future which is envisaged by leading organic bodies like the Soil Association. The planet is surrounded by a thin layer of organic life the soil. It is the ultimate, the only biological capital. Intensive industrial agricultural systems are using up that soil at an alarming rate. Intensive livestock production speeds up that loss, has devastating environmental consequences, and is, is terrible for welfare. Unless we do something and do something quite quickly, we will not have a sustainable future for this planet of any kind of food production. A drop in meat consumption would relieve water shortage, overgrazing and desertification. Animals could be farmed in more welfare-friendly systems where their needs were met, like these animals on an organic farm. Fewer livestock would mean both forests and biodiversity could be preserved. And with less demand for animal feed, farmers in developing countries could grow more food for their own human populations. The whole of the West, the developed world, has to fundamentally rethink uh, our attitude towards meat. We have to eat less meat, to eat quality meat, to eat organic meat from sustainable farming systems because that's the only way uh, that our health and the health of future generations will survive and also critically the health of the soil and the health of the planet. People who eat meat would benefit too as they would switch to a more balanced and healthier diet. With a healthier population, governments would benefit from a relief of pressure on their health services. One of the really important benefits of cutting back on meat consumption, particularly red meat consumption, is that that creates a big space in the diet to eat something positive instead. For example, we've seen in our long-term studies that people who consume more nuts, people who consume more soy products and other forms of plant protein have positive health benefits coming from that 
reduced risks of heart attacks, reduced risks of type 2 diabetes. I think governments all over the world are really very nervous about being seen as a, a nanny state, as it were, intervening too directly in the lifestyle choices of people today. But they've got to overcome that. It's really important that governments take the lead with their citizens and that they press for a systematic reduction in meat consumption. Compassion and World Farming Trust believes that Western governments and global decision makers should urgently introduce reduction targets for meat consumption over the next two decades. Consumers can also take action. Compassion and World Farming is urging the government to act quickly, but we don't have to wait for governments. We can all act today. And I think really eating less meat is better. It's better for you and your family and your health. It's better for the environment in which we all live. It's better for the poor farmers of the world who can't compete. And it's so much better for the animals who will have lives worth living. Why not act now? Eat less meat and help to create a better world for people, animals and the planet.